What's going on? This is the Bria Jordan Radio Show. Um, I have some special guests in the building. <laughs> Looking forward to this interview, yeah. guys. We um we we have some new music. Um, I actually just got hit to this artist, and I have to say he's he's pretty dope. I was impressed, and I'm not just saying that. So we'll we'll go ahead and we'll discuss the songs that I like, and um, we'll jump into it. So my guess. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Dre Walton, R&B singer, songwriter, uh, entrepreneur, all that. All that. <laughs> For real. All that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and who do you have with you? You, you gentlemen, can introduce yourselves. My name is Ralph, RDOJ. I go by. That new music too. Okay. And Neil Corleone. Yes, sir. I'm a rapper, up and coming rapper. Me and Drake did Tree Love together, trying yes, to push that right now. Mm -hmm. Set fire to it. Okay. Fire. That's pretty dope. Okay, all right. Um, what what brings you guys to my neck of the woods over here? What's going on today? How first off, how was your day? I mean we can have a regular conversation. How are you all feeling mm -hmm. today, really? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Life okay. is good, man. Today been good, the weather was tight, you know what I'm saying? The vibe's been cool. You know what I'm saying? Just left one interview. Now we're here to do another one. There you go. Yeah. Always working, right? Always, man. Always. Got to. Okay. All right. Um, Jay, give me a little bit about your background. First off, where are you from? I'm from Cleveland. I'm okay. Ohio. Yeah. Um, I was born and raised in Cleveland. Um, I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for about 10 years. Wow. Came back when I was, yeah, came back when I was 14. Um, I went to ABR. Left A.B. Hart, I went to John F. Kennedy, I went to Life Skills, I went to Shaker for a minute, and then um, I decided school wasn't my thing, so I went to the military at 17 and a half, 18. Yeah, I got out of the military when I was 22, and um, now I'm, I'm a recording artist. <laughs> wow, okay, so that's a lot first off. Yeah. So let's start with, okay, you were born and raised in Cleveland, well, born in Cleveland, right? Kind of raised in Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about ten years of my life. Yeah. How did that impact you as a person? You feel like from like the average <laughs> Cleveland person. Um, I was, hmm, I was a, like a straight A student when I lived in Milwaukee. Hmm. I went to good schools. Um, it was just a different side of life for me. Um, it was my, you know, my good side, you know. And then we decided, my parents decided to move us back when I was like 14 to Cleveland, and that's when I <laughs> got turned out. Uh-huh. Cleveland did it, huh? Cleveland did it. That, that'll happen. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, what what made you want to get into music did you listen to growing up? A lot of Motown, mm -hmm. a lot of... Um, Name some artists. <laughs> the Temptations, Michael Jackson. There you go, okay. Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, The Dells, The Four Tops, ah, The Spinners. The Whispers, um, David Ruffin, Jimmy Ruffin, um, like all the Eddie Kendricks, like um, the Five Heartbeats, which are the Dales. Um, just a lot of that. Tevin Campbell, Genuine, Tyrese, like Op Man. So you grew up on some soul music. Yeah, I did. What, is that what your parents were listening to? Were you yep. just like listening to My this? grandparents, um, when we would come up, when I was living in Milwaukee, we would come up here for the summers. Okay. And my grandmother would wake us up to the Motown, you know, and then I have young parents, like my mother's 49, so, you know oh, what I'm saying, yeah, she, had me when she, had, she had me when she was um, 18, so. Wow, okay. Um, so you kind of grew up with your parents. Yeah, so my mom would have the Ted and Campbell and, you know, stuff like that, and so it's like, I always was like intrigued, and it was like, they were singing, and it was about like, love, and like, the way I knew, how, I seen how the women, like, growing up with react to R&B and I was like, whoa, uh -huh. this is this is dope, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I kind of got locked into it. Right? Okay, so you were a ladies man early on, that kind of scared you to, to R&B, would you no, say? You no, know. you know. Okay, all right, <laughs> I, I hear you talking, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward, Wisconsin, you, you go back to Cleveland, um, you have experiences there. What led you to the military? Um, Cleveland. Um, I was at that age where, you know, a lot of us, you know what I'm saying, we, we're, we're trying to find out what our next move is going to be. Mm -hmm. 
and I was getting kicked out of all my schools. Like, I got kicked out of Kennedy. Why were you getting kicked out first off? Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, I feel like at that time it just wasn't a challenge to me though, anymore. And then, like, the people I was hanging around, like, I Who was. Who was you fighting? Yeah, I was doing all that. I used to be known for fighting. I used to be in all the fights. Get the heck out of here, okay. And so, but it was more so like a, you know, going to going to Kennedy really like shifted everything because it's like you, you had to really, you know what I'm saying, take care of yourself back then, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially back back in when I was that age, we had a lot of hood beefs, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it was just like you was just had to hold it down and I was always been like small, you know what I'm saying? So people would like to, you know what I'm saying, try to test the water, so that led me to being one of them kids, like, right. you're not going to pick on me, you know so you what I'm saying? You were defending yourself, but it's not yeah. like you just wanted and then I started to be out to, here fighting. Yeah, but then it's, it's like I started to be like, you know, it's become like this rebel and just like, you know, when I went, when I got kicked out of Kennedy and got sent to Shaker, like, it was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? And I had to meet the, it's like the same type of people in a regular school. Yeah. It don't matter if you're a suburb, you got your people up there who want to be you know, hood and all that. Every you know single that. time. So it's like, okay, so I'm going to show y'all up here what I'm about to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So So how your folks feel at that time? Like, you terrible, went to different Terrible, man. Like, like when I got, it, it had, <laughs> when I got kicked out of Shaker, I had to go to Life Skills. Man. On, Light, on Larchmere. Mm -hmm. And while I was going to Life Skills on Larchmere, um, I was on the Judge Hatchet show. <laughs> the judge. Get the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm going to look up that episode. Wait yeah, a minute. It's out there. I post it every now and then. You post back it every now? Okay. Every now and then. So listen, clip. so for everybody watching this right now, go look up your boy, man. I swear. On the Judge Hatchet show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so. So he was a celebrity early on, huh? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, and that led to, you know, I had to find something to do. You know, my mom, I was getting to that age, my mom like, look, you're going to do this. and So, the recruiter that was actually recruiting me, she was trying to recruit my older sister. Wow. And she just asked me to take the test, and then I took the, the ASVAB test for the military, and I passed it. And next thing you know, I was swearing in. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. You felt like that shifted you me. as a person? Yeah. Dr dramatically. Yeah? Yeah. In, dramatically. A, in a good way? In a good way. Okay. All right. Going to the military, definitely in, in a good way. So that's something you would recommend to people? Like going in now? I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. Okay, got you. I would something recommend, you have yes, to just... I would, you have to be built for that. That's really something you have to be mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually built for. Wow. The you know, military is not for everybody. Okay, and you were able to make it happen. Yeah. Very, very nice. So in the military, were you like writing music? What were you doing besides obviously what you had to do? My first two years in the military, I was a knucklehead, so I was getting in trouble. Yeah, authority, you know what I'm saying? I'm young, I didn't really uh, take nobody yelling at me in my face and stuff like that. So I'm like, bro, you went like, to the military. I know, but it was still hard for me to adapt when I was at that age, like, come on, bro, whatever. Mm -hmm. But as the years went on, I, I, I got smarter and more wise about it, you know what I'm saying? So I started learning how to maneuver through getting in trouble. Right. And I was meeting the right people, and the right people were telling me, look, you know what I'm saying? We see what you're trying to do, but you're going the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? So. It was the higher ups because I was always goofy and cracking jokes. So in the military, you have to respect rank while you in uniform. So my higher ups would see how I was in uniform, and then out of uniform, they'd be like, "Dude, you be tripping, bro? What you be on?" Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? So I started to maneuver differently. So that's how I made it out for real, being okay. smart. That's cool for real. Yeah. Okay, all right. So then you come back home. And then what, you just instantly just go to the studio with, with I mean, um, something sparked an inspiration yeah. for you to actually get back to music. Mm -hmm. So what, what um, What got me back into music, um, actually, my first tour in Iraq, um, we had um, a guy, um, Carlos Gaxiola, he had a studio in his trailer, and we, in Iraq you stay in these trailers, two people to a trailer, you got bump bed, on one side, and then you got a wall locker, and there's a bunk bed on the other side. You know what I'm saying? So okay. He was higher up, so he was. It was only two of them in one room, so he had enough space to have a studio set up in there. So, me and my my guy, who was a sergeant at the time, um, he he go by Smoke Smoke 100, um, but and at the time it was Sergeant Luther. So he rapped, and he caught whip that I sang. So we, you know, got into the got into the studio out in Iraq and we started recording music and you know out there that changed a lot of people's you know um, morale like seeing us right. record music and put songs out and 
you know, and we in the desert, you know what I'm saying? At nighttime, it get wild, you right. know what I'm saying? During the day, sometimes it got wild, but to see us do that, a lot of people in our company, like, caught on and latched on to that, so we were actually hot in Germany in, like, 2007, 2008, 2009, like, what? we were in a group called Decision. We were hot, opened up for Trillville, uh, Lloyd, Flo Flip, Crime Mob at the time, wow. like, all of them cats was coming over there, and we would open up for them and still have to wake up in the morning and be soldiers. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So shout out to my guy Smoke. He's um, still doing his thing out there in Florida, between Florida and Atlanta right now. Um, and he just, it was him and it, that situation with him and I that just made me be like, you know, this is what I want to do. Yeah, take it so, serious. Yeah, so I think my last tour in Iraq, I was like, you know, they was offering me you know, money to stay in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, this is not what I want to do. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I got out. My first two years, I got out in 2010, so for like 2010 to like 2013 was rough, real rough. In what ways? Like financially, okay. physically, like everything was just rough. I couldn't find work. Everybody mm -hmm. was telling me I was overqualified because of my military career. Wow. And I had to find out what overqualified mean. Overqualified basically means you have so much credential, we don't need, we can't even pay you what we want to pay you. If we can get somebody who will come in here and work for nine dollars an hour, right. you can't even. Why are you even applying for this job? You should be applying for something else. You know what I'm saying? So, you're overqualified to work this position. Well, what kind of places were you applying? And to? I applied to do stock at Toys R Us overnight, stock at Walmart. Um, okay, yeah. The, the only job that hired me out the military first was AutoZone for eight dollars and fifty cent an hour. Really? And I'm a decorated war veteran. Like, decorated. I've been war twice, real war. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, everybody, it was just so discouraging. Like, I can't find a job. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, run to the post office, go to the post office, go to the post office, they make good money. You go to the post office, it's just the same as the military. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The structure is the same and everything. So I was like, that's not for me either. You don't do and that I don't want to work for nobody, for real. And then people talk to you any kind of way. And then you see people in, in like AutoZone, I was doing manager work, but getting paid employee money. Right. And it's like, if I can come in and run computers and commercial this, and, the, and I can't, I'm still making $8, yeah. no. Not happening. No. So in 2014, I decided I didn't want to work for nobody no more, and I haven't since. Wow. Okay, so how you start setting up your life for you, I mean, you still have to eat and mm -hmm. pay for shelter and everything, mm -hmm. so what did you do? Well, um... In the Bible, it's basically that you can share. In the, in the Bible, it's a verse basically that says your gifts will make room for you. Mm -hmm. So whatever your gift is, that's what's supposed to make room for you on Earth. Whether it's the gift of song, the gift of care, like medical people or rapping, you know, whatever it can, whatever your gift is, whatever you're good at, that's what's supposed to make you your money and make room for you while you're on Earth. So I was like, well, I can sing. You know what I'm saying? So. I start running into, I knew people from singing and doing records. Like, I was doing records, but I wasn't performing out okay. on the scene. So I would do, I had records like with Pooh Good and Ray Jr. And, right. But just I out. wasn't performing. You know what I'm saying? They just knew me, I sang. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I just So would people know that that was you when they would see you out and stuff? No. Oh. They wouldn't. They wouldn't know. No, because I wasn't performing. But it's probably a bunch of people that wanted to do music and stuff. Yeah, they you probably did. your song. Yeah, but That's crazy. they didn't know who I was, and then I just got active. I got real active and I was like, you know, they gonna know who I am. Like, I, I really stood for R&B, like that's what yeah. I stand for today still. Y'all gonna know that I'm bringing noise, you know what I'm saying? So um, I just started getting getting close with some of the, the, the R&B cats that was out here on the scene performing, like Frank West and Brandon Landrum. And I would see these cats perform and sing live with these bands. And I just got cool with them, you know, and right. opportunities to join bands opened up for me. Mm -hmm. And when joining a band, you get paid. You there know what I'm saying? So through joining the band, I joined the unit band, right. which is a big band around Cleveland. Um, and we was doing shows with Carl Thomas and Silk and, you know, so I was okay. getting those opportunities, but at the same time, making sure I stood out to be heard. You know what I'm saying? How, so, how does one do that in a band? Just go hard. Okay. You should like, you know, it's, it's, you got, it's some people who got it and it's some people who got it. Yeah, they, they felt your energy. You know what I'm saying? They, I bought it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's something that I, I, I pride myself on when I perform. You're going to feel my performances. You know what I'm saying? So when I would get those opportunities and they, oh, we opened up for Carl Thomas, we opened up for, okay. Yeah. Cool. Play my jams because I'm going to kill it. I know that's right. When I would get off the stage, the acts would, hey, bring that guy here. Like, well, who's that guy right there? They wanted to work with you. So I met, you know, Carl Thomas. BJ Chicago Kid, Ro James, 
I opened up for Tank in 2017. Okay. Um, oh, so, amazing artist. Yeah, so it's like I just got my R&B bag for real. Like, wow. I just went hard, yeah. So wait, so is there a reason that you weren't doing shows earlier on? Like, yeah. Okay. I was shook. Ah, oh, you were scared? Yeah, I was scared to perform Wow. Live. What, um, about the attention? What was it? Um, You know, messing up. You know, mm. not having so clumsy you feet. yourself out. Yeah, having wow. clumsy feet, all that stuff. So it's like, when I joined the band, the band MD, um, Nate Ford, he really was like, yo, you are awesome, but it's like you have to perform to your crowd because I would perform sideways and he could critique me. Wow. Like, yo, you're doing it this way. If you do it this way, and I just, you know, I got I got in my bag and I was like, you know what? I'm a, and I, Now you go to my shows, I come out in the crowd, I sing to you, you know, if your birthday, I'm going to sing to you. Right. Man. So you needed that. You yeah, needed I needed some, it. Yeah, from, I needed it. From some yeah. seasoned people. That's it, yeah. man, for them to tell me, like, yo, wow. man, you got it, bro. Go, so go ahead and do your thing. So, yeah. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> so we here today. Um, tell me what you have going today. I mean, what, what projects uh, <coughs> have you had, I mean, have you dropped? Okay. What are you working on? I mean, I want to know. Um, as of today, um, we are um, pushing eleven sixteen. My single, my new single, that's just been I going like that crazy. I like, no, I really like that song. I it's played been going it like crazy four times. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good song. It's going well crazy. Written. It's going crazy right now. So eleven sixteen. Um, like I said, we just left iHeart Radio. Shout out to Real One Zero Six One. Like nice. And um, they picked it up. And they really broke, helped me break 1116. Okay. They were the first radio station in the city to pick it up. And Voice It Radio picked it up. And then Nerve DJs picked it up. You got some more coming around to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So with them picking that up, it took me to a different level. And then I hit the shade room. I did my little viral thing, my little semi-viral thing in the shade room. So, what was that? I, I'm not here. Um, they did a Soul Sundays. And they had you singing on there? Yeah, they picked me up. Get the heck out of here. So, oh, you really about to go. For yeah, real. so it's okay, only a matter of time. time it's only a matter of time. God is good, and I just see all the doors opening up. So right now, we just working the records. I got some amazing artists, friends of mine that I'm helping them, helping work with them in the studio on records. Um, my best friend, Mike Kayla, is out right now. We have a record uh, right there that um, I Heart Real 106 just, just picked up. Um, my boy RDLJ, we're working on his project. Okay. Yes, sir. All uh, right, now. Me and Neil mm -hmm. got the Street Love video and single about to go crazy. So it's just like, man, more more life, man. We just we just some positive people trying to do some positive things in this industry, man. That's it for real. Okay, so tell me this. Like, are y'all a, a group? Do y'all have a um, uh, a label? I mean, What's um, the situation? we're not a group. Um, we just, you know all in some way family you know what i'm saying and we okay. all share the mutual respect and love for music and in the art of creating mm -hmm. so you know what i'm saying it's like if you and if you in our circle you would know we, we about positivity and you know what I'm saying getting to the next level and moving forward in life so it's like you surround yourself with people you want to be like and for you sure. want to have that kind of energy so all of us just trying to get to the promised land any way we can with this so you know like i said with nail nail is on his own amazing you know what I'm saying? But you put a nail with a Dre Walton and we ten times amazing. Right. You feel me? Iron or you know iron. Yeah, and Ralph coming with the pen, you know what I'm saying? And Kayla with the bars, and you know, I got some female singers. And, and I'm she's with. dope too. Yeah, man. She's a rapper. My Kayla is I was, definitely I was dope. Very, I was pleasantly surprised. Mm hmm Yeah. She's this her album's gonna be crazy. The twentieth summer, October 9th. I had to plug that. My best friend Mike Kayla is dropping the twentieth. Okay. Summer. And, and y'all all not just so it's not a label, it's not going towards a label, y'all just gonna be working together. Well, I'm working, working I'm actually I'm working on my own label. Okay. Putting my own Dream On Entertainment. Can you talk about okay. Yeah, Dream On Entertainment. Um I'm gonna obviously be the first. The first. We working out the logistics back right now, right. but I have all the paperwork that I need for it and all nice. that stuff. So you know, I want to be able to. My vision for my label when it gets there, it's probably gonna take me a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, but my vision for my label is to. I call it Dream On because I don't feel like people dream anymore. I don't feel like people um, have the the not the ambition, but the courage to chase their dreams anymore. So. Dream On is going to be that label, like you can do it all, it's going to be a one-stop shop, artist consultation, um, video shoots, photo shoots, um, vocal arrangements, I have a crazy team that I work with and, and if you work with me, I'll take you to that same, through that same process, That's awesome. from my engineer to my production to, you know, like I said, vocal, I vocal arrange very great, 
I can do vocal production, great. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I have a lot of knowledge that I just want to help people get get into this. Like if you want to do it, it's not hard. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't artists, always have you to, hear that. You don't, it don't always have to, you know, it's artists eating and making good money yeah. that aren't heard every day. That's you know true. what I'm saying? So it's like, what is it going to mean to you? What does it mean to you? Like if I can get me and my, me and my, my guys in and we can feed our families and right. be able to it's all about send, that send down base. yeah and send down the ladder for somebody else like it's all about it's a, it's like a, a, a helping effect I'm gonna I'm a get on I'm gonna shoot the ladder down you're gonna come up and then you shoot the ladder down and you bring somebody else right. up and that's how we doing it man don't nobody do it like that no more so I'm okay. glad about the people that I work with so do you have artists you looking at right now like how if an artist wants to uh, to be a part <laughs> of dream one mm -hmm. uh, the record label like I mean, what would they? What would impress you? What are you looking goal, for? What kind goal, of artist? The ambition, the goal, the um, understanding that it don't happen overnight, and it, with you, it could happen overnight. But mm -hmm. you're gonna put some work in. Right. You're gonna put some work in. It's gonna be some some long days. But if I can look at you and see perseverance, and see that you're not gonna be quick to give up, yeah, I definitely want to help you. And it's not even that you got to sign to me. Right. I just want to help you. Okay achieve if you come to me like Dre I got this hot song I need a hook on it if I believe in it I'm gonna throw it on there that's so period you know okay. what I'm saying that's what this dream on is about getting people and you know what I'm saying to live out their dreams like if you want to do it you can do it my best friend came to me and told me she wanted to do music mm -hmm. I didn't take it seriously I'm like okay Kayla whatever then she, I was like okay get X Y and Z together and then come talk to me and she did it and I, I had you know what I'm saying I was impressed like whoa yeah and the material that I heard from her was like you're serious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get in the studio. Let's do it then. And Amen. now we have her album, October 9th, the 20th of summer. You know okay. what I'm saying? And you, you're going to hear a lot of vocal production and vocal arrangement from me, but focus on the bars and the stories that Kayla's telling because that's why I was like, yo, like I, I, whatever I can do to help you, I'm going to do it. Okay. That's what anybody I work with. If, if, if I know you're serious and you're really going to put the time and the work and investment behind it, I'm going I'm to help you out if I can. And are you working on an album? Is she featured on your album? Um, I'm not working on an album yet. I'm working on the EP. Okay. I'm EP. working on the EP How for now. How many songs is an EP? What makes um, uh, um, a project an EP? What's the difference between that and an uh, album? It, I've looked it up. I've read about it. Well, the it, difference really between that and an album is it's, EP is extended play. Basically, something you can run back. You know what I'm saying? It's not too long and it's not going to... It's going to tell, it's going to get to the story quick. Okay. Opposed to an album, it's going to give you a story. A story story. So an EP, think of it like a mini movie. Okay. And think of an album as a movie. All right. So how many songs are in your mini movie? Probably five to six. Five to six songs? I always do five to six. Are you going to have visuals for all of them? Right now, we got the 1116 visual. Ooh. I'll probably do two more. Okay. Yeah, but... That's exciting. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. I'm gonna probably I'm trying to get it ready for uh, the winter months for when it's you know cold outside. You so that's that. when it's yeah. when we can expect it. Can I get a date or anything like that? Mm, soon. Soon. <laughs> okay. All right. That's soon. good enough. I'll take it. I'm, I'm not pushy. Soon. Soon. <laughs> soon. Okay. Um. So you just dropped your single 1116. That's mm -hmm. been doing crazy. Mm -hmm. Radio starting to pick it up. What's your next single that you're dropping? My next single after that is going to be. Um, I don't know. It's a toss up between two. I will tell you the titles of them. It's a toss up between what you're doing tonight, okay, which is um, a rider. Oh, well, it's a rider. You pop that thing on and just ride out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What you doing or, tonight? Um, still thinking, which is a follow up to my first single ever. Think about me off my Negligee EP. Hmm. So if you heard my Negligee EP and think about me was your favorite. And think about me part two is definitely gonna be a You're gonna like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about your progression from your first uh project to this one. I Man, mean, are we um, really gonna you know Yeah. Okay. Yeah, from my first project until um I mean until my next project coming soon, um there's been a lot of progression, a lot of maturity, okay. a lot of understanding, a lot of growth, um, vocally, uh, mentally spiritually physically mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you'll actually you'll, you'll definitely hear the growth and what i've learned over the years and like the things that i've been through my next ep is going to be like um like a confessions okay yeah like a confessions album it's like i'm going to give you a side of me that you know like 1116 was a side of me no one has ever seen 
So this is these are all real true stories. True stories. Music? True stories. Okay. I don't write anything anything that I don't go through. So and you you make a lot of love songs mm -hmm. from what I've listened to. Obviously, I mean R&B. I, mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. um, some of it sound like you you've been um, heartbroken, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but you still have hope. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so you listen. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Where does that come from? You know, with you explaining as much as you are comfortable to uh, explain to me. Um, tell me about that. Um. Is it based off of one relationship? Is it no? Just it's based, based off, off of, of just experience. It's based off of ex it's based off experiences and relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, I tend to be a. Um, in my relationships, I tend to be a potential seeker, if you will. Okay. I look at potential and I see it and I love it. Okay. But if I can be the only one that sees your potential and you can't, mm. then that's where we have a disconnect. So in a lot of my relationships, I've seen potential and people that didn't see the potential that I've seen in themselves. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So in, in doing so, that caused miscommunication and heartbreak mm -hmm. so like a lot of my relationships I've been in I would never be afraid to say they they didn't work you know what I'm saying and it was like I tried to make them work you know what I'm saying and I've always been a lover at heart you know what I'm saying but after a couple of them it was just like mm, you know forget yeah. this and that's when I came with my another cloth EP okay from you last sure November. wasn't you so you could keep making some albums no I wasn't okay. I, right, I think I was just it. a I was just a lover boy. Okay. That's all it was. It was just like I want to, you know what I'm saying, have somebody to come home to, love up on, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. it's like life will shake you up when you're supposed to be focused on something else. I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? So I finally 1116, like I just man, that was the one that did it. Was like, yo, wake up. Okay. So in that song. The girl, she leaves you. She ends up leaving you for another person, mm -hmm. and like that right in front in of life. you, and was like really cold with it. That really happened in real life. That really happened in real life. That happened in real Wait, life. Wait, and and they both gave you the stare down. No, like, he didn't give me no stare down. He didn't give you no stare no, down. No, he's not that bold. Okay, he all wasn't. Right. We had to we had to fabricate some things. Okay, because if just, you know me, you know that's not how I would have handled it. All right, nah. but man, okay, yeah, Th that's yeah, cold. That happened in real life. Um, okay, you know that was one of my longest relationships, and you know. Um, it was a disconnect that I didn't know about, you know, wow. and um, it was just one of them things where you know, was kid, we was kicking it, and you know, a couple years in, kicking it, four years in, yeah. you know what I'm saying, daughter, family, wow, like locked in, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. so um, I actually, you know, walked in, and it was a dude sitting on the couch where I had just got oh, my man. hair braided, like, on a couple couch? hours earlier. It was at, it was at her house, but it was like she she was like Kevin, like and I just pulled up, like you know what I'm saying, and I caught I caught it in the act, well not in the act, like something was going on, but he, they was chilling, and I'm like okay, yo, what do you say at that point? I mean like well I, you know what I'm saying, it was just like a whole lot of emotion, like yo, because real talk, like we had just came from Miami, like blowing the bag, like what's this? Wow. Hello. So she waited for the Miami trip that she was Took out the again. Miami trip. Hot girl summer. You feel me? Wow. She started hers early. That. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I asked her that when I when it happened, you know, I was like, yo, so what's up? Is this what you want? And she told me, yeah. And we didn't talk for like months. Months. Right? Months. She like really just went and started messing with the other dude. So I was like, okay. Okay, so when that happens, can you forgive the person? Yeah. And, and this is why I'm, you know. Hey, okay, go This ahead. is my question for all of you gentlemen. And, and I ask you this because, you know, um, some some guys and some women too, just people in general, right? People are going to be people. Um, you know, do their own thing. So if the lady does her own thing, I mean, can you, can you forgive her? <laughs> um, yeah. Songs in the back of your head, though. Yeah, yeah that's okay. the thing. What's man? the question in, in the back of your head? And I'm so happy that y'all are being honest about that. That you actually, if you love somebody and they make a mistake, just like you probably made a mistake before, you actually can forgive them. Mm -hmm. So, what is there a limit to? Okay, no, nah, you you do this. I, is there yeah, anything that's limit. unforgivable? Is my it's, question. It's some it's some things that's unforgivable. What's unforgivable? Sure. 